Hello, everyone, and welcome to the Women's Game or Writers Class. I haven't quite decided. That's the that's the wonders of having four podcasts. You go one, two, three, four, one, two. Oh, today is this, and it will be hilarious because she'll end up on Meet Hollywood Monday and have nothing oh. to do with Hollywood. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Now I really needed to put my false eyelashes on for that. Oh, one, oh, oh my goodness, the spectacular Maggie Smith. Oh, that means that you know who's being interviewed. Ah, uh, that's gonna be weird. I can't wait till Jade sees this and go. You couldn't even hold. You couldn't even stay on the format of the podcast. No, it's the same reason why I have on no lipstick. I'm not on the format of anything today, including the format of Winona. She's she laughed. I don't know who's here, but she laughed. Anyway, you're not here to hear about me. I lied because I have to do books. I was about to jump right into interviewing the guests, and then I was like, "Hold on, books." Told you I wasn't here today. Just. There we go. We wrote books, me, we meaning not just like, I don't think I have two personalities in me. So no, I'm not referring to myself as a we. It's normally like a jade on this side and I'm normally in like a better studio, but I don't know. I guess laziness happened. So I'm in the bad studio. And the books are, and I thought I did, and I thought I did my journey alone, and I thought divorce is bad. If only I were me, a memoir in verse, Widow's Web, Widow's Debt, and Foreign Coffee. If you were counting, that is six books. And yes, this is six in sign language. And why I keep doing sign language on, on interviews by myself, I do not know. But anyway, six books, and you can pick those up anywhere that you can hear audiobooks. I'm so sorry. I just recognized I did sign language and then said the word audiobooks. Maybe it was just the, yeah, yeah. That's something you would have to, it would be a hearing and deaf thing. Sorry. Moving on. You can give, if you can wow, read the rest of our 11 books, which is a grand total of 17 books. I'm going to stick with the theme, straight up signing it. 17 books on www.andithoughtladies.com. And just in case you were wondering, did Winona really forget herself and did not do the carsalesman.com? Guess what? You're wrong. I remembered. It's www.indithoughtladies.com. Yes, just with all those old heads that still listen to the podcast, I had to pull it back in the day. But you're not here to hear about me. You're here to hear about our wonderful guests. Wonderful guests, would you like to introduce yourself? Sure. <laughs> I feel like I should be talking really fast to match you. Um, I'm Maggie Smith. I live in Milwaukee, Wisconsin. I'm a debut author at kind of late middle age. One You're novel, in. not 17, just one. <laughs> I have to say, though, like, you have to, like, pat yourself on the back because it's a novel. We write poetry. So, oh, I mean, well, everybody has their own kind of thing. I don't think I could write poetry or short stories, particularly. I'm kind of a novelist. I, I kind of think of it as a really long, I think of really long stories when I'm thinking about what to write, so. Oh. Um, if you can so, see my screen, you see the cover in back. Truth and Other Lies is my debut. I'm so excited about this. Okay, so, excuse me, my lunch is telling on me. Excuse me, I'm sorry. That is not what a lady is supposed to say. But um, you have interviewed so many authors, so it feels weird for you to say debut author. It's just like, what? It is. People are going, you didn't write a, a book before? Why? <laughs> I volunteered about four years ago to be a podcast host for the Women's Fiction Writers Association. And at that time, we only had 500 members. Now we have 1,800 members, which just means lots and lots and more people are writing women's fiction books and having their debuts and getting published. And so I've got a very long list of people. So yeah, I just did my 137th interview yesterday. Uh, I do one every week. And the women I meet through that and interview are fantastic. They each have such a interesting story to tell from self publishing to publishing with the big five agencies there. I've I've interviewed people from Vietnam and Australia and Africa and Canada and Europe and a lot, of course, in the United States. And uh, my husband tells the story every time I'm up in my office on Monday or Tuesday, whenever I do it, I walk downstairs and I say, I just interviewed the most interesting person. And he says, you say that every week. <laughs> and I say, well, but but listen to what this person tells. <laughs> 
<laughs> so uh, I had one, uh, one of my more famous, one, not famous, but interesting people um, had lived in Iraq during Hassan, uh, Saddam Hussein's reign and uh, worked for an NGO. And her husband was in the diplomatic service, I think, too. And um, she tells the story of her best friend she discovered later was a spy for Saddam and she was spying on her. <laughs> is that an oh, interesting story? <laughs> now that yes, I know. Story. Wow. Yeah. That so I mean, you can't help but kind of shake your head and go, "Boy, people lead much more interesting lives than I do." Sometimes, <laughs> and that's kind of what her book was about, too. I mean, you know, it was a novel, but it it kind of had that as the premise. Well, hey, she had. You know when they say write what you know? Yeah. Woo! She had a good story. <laughs> she was good. She was like, I lived a thriller. I'll write that. <laughs> yeah, that's good. That's a good place to start. Yeah. So um, since you've interviewed so many novelists over this time and with over a hundred and some interviews, did that have any influence or impact on when you sat down to write your debut novel? Were you like, I can't do this? Or, or like, <laughs> no, I felt like I could do it because I, I think I felt like I could do it because so many other people from so many different walks of life and many of them not uh, someone that write, started writing from a very early age because I didn't. I'm, you know, I'm not that person that says, oh, yes, when I was 10 years old, I wrote stories and didn't do any of that. Um, I mean, I was in journalism in high school and when I first started college. So that's a type of writing, but it's not the the type that I do now. Uh, no, I think it kind of probably gave me the sense that I could do it if they could do it. And um, many of them are starting later in life, not necessarily retired, but they might be doing it while they, while they have another job. Um, and uh, my kids are all grown. I have stepchildren and they're in their late 20s. And so, you know, I, it's my husband and me, so I don't have a lot of other things taking up my time. Um, and, and actually, I also felt like I had learned so incredibly much by just listening to them. One of the things I talked to them about is, is how they marketed their book or how they got it published and then how they marketed it. So I felt like I was just a little sponge, you know, listening to all these people and I, I generally say what worked and what didn't work because I feel like that's interesting to listeners but it was also interesting to me to say oh well enough people said that didn't work don't do that when you when you market your book Maggie or enough people said look at this one this is a good technique so I felt like I was getting kind of a uh, MFA as I was interviewing the people as well so it really came in handy I thought definitely Definitely. You okay, probably find that talk. too. You know, you, oh, you interview Lord, yeah. people and you go, oh yeah, I'm going to try that. Yeah. Definitely. Yeah. Yeah. I think um, we sometimes have a co-host and she goes, I often find myself rewatching the videos because like, I don't get everything on the first side while you're talking, you have to go back and take notes. And sure, I sure. started doing that. Cause you know, well, at the time we were doing what, seven interviews a, a week or something like oh, that. Oh my goodness. Oh, wow. I'd go and crazy so, doing that. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, I went back and started listening and the, oh my goodness, the information is insane. It is so good. You're right. It's like going to a college course and learning about the publishing business. And, and that's have- also kind of what's neat about the community is writers are incredibly generous in their information. You know, I oftentimes will get, and now that I'm saying this, I'm going to get even more. Uh, but I'll get I'll get notes from people saying, well, could you just tell me about and I'll say, you know what, let's just hop on a phone call or let's just set up a zoom call. And I'll just talk for to you for 30 40 minutes because I don't want to write it all down. It's mm-hmm. just up here somewhere. And you're going to ask questions that I wouldn't know to answer. So I'll just be your, you know, consultant for 30. I'm not going to do it forever but you know i'll do it for 30 minutes and tell you what i know and it's just my opinion um but people did that with me and i'm willing to pass it along so this is a very giving creative community and that's i think that's so beautiful because i mean we're all in competition with each other honestly because the the pool of readers is getting smaller and smaller and yet yeah i suppose 
But we're I, also in competition with Netflix and, you know, movie theaters and concert halls and, you know, anything that people do that is outside their work that they do mm -hmm. in their spare time. Uh, and I think also, I am not in any other artistic communities, but I think I've kind of think about actors and musicians and dancers and and whenever I've met somebody in there, it feels like their communities are also pretty supportive. So maybe that's just the artistic, you know, if you're creative and you're trying to create something, you know how hard it is. Mm -hmm. And so you want to help other people that are in that same situation. But it seems like actors, when you hear them talk, they, they all are trying to help newcomers and and uh, musicians are always bringing in outside people to collaborate with. So it just feels like the collaboration and the camaraderie in the community is something that's maybe just comes naturally to people that are creative like that. I don't know. Maybe. That's my theory. <laughs> I mean, we're sharing our work with the world, why not with each other? <laughs> yeah, exactly, exactly. And I think also you never realize how many of those people in the community will you'll re-encounter in your career i mean at, at some point i had to turn around and get what we call blurbs or endorsements people that would say stuff nice stuff about my book on my cover um, and i turned to people that i had met at conferences or i had praised their book or uh taken a class from them or those kinds of things so you know you never know it comes around um it does. We are talking about being creative. I read the description of your book and go, well, she's just creative. <laughs> Devil meets Prada and the President's Men. How did you think of this? Well, um, I actually started with with a very simple concept and something that, you know, everybody writes about is family. And I started with mothers and daughters and with the concept kind of coming out of my own background of not feeling very close to my mother. I know a lot of people have a very close relationship with their mother, but that was not the case with me. And so when I reached my mid twenties, I was really kind of searching around for role models that would, would serve that function. What am I going to be when I grow up? You know, when I become a, a fully grown adult woman and who am I going to pattern myself after? And I wasn't finding that in my mother. So I was looking for outside role models pri primarily in the workplace. And so I thought that would be an interesting dynamic to deal with it, have a, a young woman at 25 and her mentor and her mother and those three circling around each other and, and fashion a story that would be about that. And of course, you know, nobody wants to read about just regular old people living in a neighborhood. <laughs> so, so I made these people a little larger than life. So the mother is running for uh, Congress and the mentor is a world famous uh, Pulitzer Prize winning journalist. I tell people it's kind of like Diane Sawyer or maybe even Oprah. I mean, this person, it, they walk down the street, people go, oh, you know who that is, <laughs> you know? Um, and that's the person that this person winds up working for, who is kind of her mentor. So that's the Devil Wears Prada story storyline. And because the mother is running for political office and there's a secret that is floating around that may hurt her career, that's kind of the all the president's men. And the and the 25 year old is an investigative reporter like all the president's men. So so that was where that juxtaposition. It's not about politics, but it does have a lot of kind of um, current issues in it, primarily abortion, pro-life, pro-choice. But it also has Me Too and some environmental things and the whole issue of uh, social media, because the uh, journalist winds up being accused on Twitter of a, a plagiarism basically and 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 how that starts snowballing and she can't get get in front of it and she fears that may just ruin her whole entire career um, so there's lots of kind of current uh, current topics that are hot that are in the book uh, but i hope that really what is the major part that's coming across is the relationship between these three women Definitely. You're listening very intentively. 
<laughs> I love how you, you put on the bottom three women, two secrets, one life. Oh, I, I've been thinking a lot about, <laughs> I've been thinking a lot about, and I'll ask you too, if, is a secret always a lie? No. No, see, it isn't always. That's what I feel like too. Sometimes you, you know, we don't have to tell everything about everything about us to everybody. I mean, we should be able to say none of your business <laughs> sometimes uh, and have that be okay. Or we may keep a secret because we don't want to hurt somebody else. You know, it's we would tell the secret, but it's not our secret to tell necessarily. Um, so I, I think there is a difference between secrets and lies and, and obviously lies are usually secrets. You're usually not telling them. Uh, but in this case, um, one or two of the characters has a secret that they're not openly lying about, but they just as soon not come out. I guess I'd say. I, I think um, when you said our, our, our secrets always lies and no, normally it's a, something that happened that's true that needs to be lied around. So the event is true, yeah. but the reaction are lies. <laughs> yeah. And why you chose to keep it a lie. I mean, you know, like I said, it may be something that you're embarrassed about or that might reflect badly on you. Uh, you wish you hadn't done it. Or like I said, you just say, well, I mean, that was in the past and it's nobody's business. You know, when you meet a new person, for example, you don't just open your chest and say, here, look at all my dirty laundry. <laughs> you may do it after you get to know them and you trust them a little bit more. But initially, you're not you're letting letting your secrets out over time as you as you get closer to the person and as you trust them more. And I think your book, your your title actually goes well with our secrets always lies, truth and other lies. Okay, I don't do segues here, so we're just jumping. Okay. Just jumping. Okay. okay. Uh, you, madam, have a cool job. Am I, I right? Do. You're managing editor of the yes. online literary publication, The Right City Magazine. Can you tell us a bit about becoming, first of all, managing editor, and then a bit about the magazine? Well, I'll start with a bit about the magazine. It's um, it's an online magazine, the Wright City magazine, uh, the Wright City magazine, of the Chicago Writers Association. And I live in Milwaukee, but I'm 90 minutes from Chicago, and my book takes place in Chicago. And um, so I've been involved with the Chicago Writers Association. So I got the job when the person that had had it for 10 years. Um, uh, didn't want to do it anymore. She was feeling like she was neglecting her writing and not getting anything done. Uh, we basically publish every two weeks and we publish original short stories and poetry, very occasionally creative nonfiction, uh, very short stories. They're 1800 words or less. So uh, really, really short. Um, and we also publish, uh, Chicago Writers has a Book of the Year awards and a first chapter contest. So we publish those winners as well. And I have three associate editors, no, four associate editors. I have uh, three that help with, with the short stories and then I have a poetry editor and she uh, reads the poetry. And uh, I kind of manage the project and manage uh, the submissions and them getting things to read. And then I'm also a reader as well. Uh, I'd say we probably only accept about 10% of the submissions that we get, which is probably fairly standard, I think, for most literary magazines. Uh, we pay a slight amount, uh, which makes us a little bit different. You know, it's $35 for a short story. So it's, it's something, uh, not everybody pays anything. Um, and uh, we get lots of submissions. <laughs> so uh, I think people have been writing a lot during the pandemic, uh, people that hadn't necessarily written before. And we get a lot of uh, submissions from overseas, uh, actually. And uh, so it's interesting how many different ways we get it. How I got the job was just simply being asked. It's a volunteer, volunteer position. So uh, the former editor asked me if I'd like to do it. And I said, sure. 
So I have to ask, how do you get all that reading and writing with a debut novel coming out? How do you do it? Uh, well, my three editors help. They sometimes sometimes it's so many that it, we don't all read everything. That is the idea that we all read everything and then we kind of not exactly vote, but you know we chime in with what we think. Um, if we get very overwhelmed, then I read and one other person reads. And, and so we can spread it out a little bit. Uh, the poetry person, unfortunately, all of that falls on them. <laughs> but poetry isn't usually quite as long to read. Um, and if we get very overwhelmed and we just came off of one of those times, uh, we just close for submission for a while and, until we catch up. So I, again, I think that's something that a lot of magazines do. So I, I find it's a nice break. I write in the morning when I'm fresh. And then in the afternoon, I will do either that. I blog for a association called Rocky Mountain Fiction Writers, which is in Colorado, and I do the podcast. So those are my three little things related to writing, but they aren't my own writing. Um, I guess the blog is my own writing, but um, so it's a nice mix. And, and that's because I don't work at another job. I had a company in a totally different area. I sold artwork for a living um, for many years. I owned a company that did that, and I sold that company about four years ago. So I became then a full-time writer. So that's how I find the time to do that. If I had a full-time job, I wouldn't be able to do all that. I think that is absolutely amazing. Uh, you are fully dedicated and immersed into the writing world. I'm, I am. I'm in love. I'm in love with this life. <laughs> it's so amazing it's a nice world to be in <laughs> i've been a huge reader all my life so it's like oh i get to be around all the people that are writing and i have an excuse to go to their workshops and tune into their interviews and you know it's it's the best of all possible worlds <laughs> can, you, can you tell us a bit about um getting published what your journey was like literary agent self-published traditional publish i did try and go for a literary agent i approached about 50 uh agents and you know got some nibbles but didn't get an offer of representation and somewhere in there i uh also started querying small presses and i did find a small press that um accepted my novel and you know it, it's kind of a weird i don't know if you've had rejection letters but after a while you kind of get used to opening them and no and thinking they're going to say no so when they say yes it's kind of like wait a minute let me read that again <laughs> i i think they're saying yes <laughs> what's happening here so um i signed initially with a small women-owned press and then they went bankrupt so i was with them for about eight months during which i was doing editing with one of the people on staff a, a very good editor uh, that they had on staff and then we were at the end of that stage and going into designing the cover when the whole thing just kind of collapsed everybody on apparently unknown to me the person that owned this uh, did not have a very uh, a staff that felt good about her leadership and they all quit in mass and um, so eventually you know within a few weeks the whole thing unraveled and I got my rights back but I was kind of right back where I started only I had a much more finished polished manuscript from the editing so I was able within a few months to find another small press and coincidentally that small press happened to be somebody that is 30 minutes from my house I was just complaining to people in my community community of Milwaukee about this situation and they said you know there's somebody right down the street why don't you send it to her and um, so I did and they took it and so I lost about a year but it was during a pandemic year uh, and so I released in March 2022 so it's just been about a month and a half um, and I was able to get a fantastic cover. Uh, I worked very collaboratively with the press. It's it's only got about eight people on staff. And uh, being very close to me, I'm able to meet in person if I want to, go pick up books if I need to. Um, and they were able to help me with my launch party. And so uh, it all worked out 
just fine <laughs> for me. <laughs> Oh my goodness, this is a And I am writing a second book and I think yeah. I will try and get an agent then and maybe get a larger publisher. I don't know. We'll see. It's it's not a continuation of this book. It's a different set of characters and it's really a different genre. This one was really so primarily women's fiction and the next one is tones of women's fiction but also some psychological suspense with it. So it has a little bit of a genre switch to it. I'm loving the fact that you join in our world with a psychological thriller. Yeah. Oh, those fun. are fun. I like I reading those. The thrillers. Okay. I think um I think we're about done. Okay. I'm check with myself. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Yep. Done. <laughs> oh, <okay. laughs> oh no, we missed the narcissism question, but I feel like it was covered. I just want to know since it is well known as narcissism question. Is there any chance you think that we might want to be inter you might want to interview two adorable African American girls that write poetry on your podcast? Well, no, because and I'm often at times approached by people like this. I you can, not unless you write women's fiction and are a member of the Women's Fiction Writers Association because and it's your debut novel. So it has to be a novel, it has to be women's fiction, and you have to belong to the association for me to, because I'm really just doing it. It's not my podcast, it's their podcast and I'm the host. And so, you know, I say no to lots of people, not just you, <laughs> oh, <laughs> but shocks. I'm sure there's lots of po podcasters that would love to have you on. <laughs> uh, shucks, I can never be on your podcast now. I've already no, read not my this one. women's fiction. <laughs> been um it's what it's about two years old now oh and you've written other books yeah yeah well i i don't know how whatever so. yeah yeah anyway so can, can you tell everyone where to find your book and where to follow you on social media if they if sure want uh, I primarily am active on Instagram because I'm a very visual person so I am Maggie Smith writes w-r-i-t-e-s there and please follow me I'd love to have you I about 3,000 followers, so room for lots more. Uh, I publish, I, I, I post about my own novel, of course, uh, other writers and their debuts or new books. Uh, I do cover cover comparisons, uh, so I'll, I'll post about that. Um, I also do post about dogs because I'm a foster rescue mom. Um, so, so lots of different things there, but that's primarily, and my website is very similar, but Maggie Smith writer, W R I T E R dot com. All the podcast episodes are on that site, as well as a few reviews that I do, uh, more about the novel. Uh, I love doing book clubs. So if you want to have a, me as a guest on your book club, there's a tab there for that. Um, I write blogs, so I have the blogs there. So those two places, Maggie Smith writes and Maggie Smith Writer on Instagram. And where you can find my book is, uh, you can order it from uh, bookstore.org, uh, Indie Bound. Uh, your local bookstore can order it if they're not carrying it. And uh, if they're in Chicago and Milwaukee, they might be carrying it. And it's on Amazon and Barnes and Noble, and I think Walmart and Target, uh, most of the online retailers as well. I also have an audio book, um great great narrator that did it and uh an ebook so it's available in all three of those and uh Thank stop so by much. and and take it home with you and lots of libraries are are i i've had a lot of orders from libraries so it might be at your library as well thank you it's been such a pleasure having you you have Oh my goodness, you changed your life around from art to writing and immersed yourself in it. And we have truth and other lies as a result. I'm excited. Thank Can you. I just say that one more time? I need to say the tagline one more time. Three women, two secrets, one lie. Oh my goodness. Talk about a nice little line to explain the book. Yeah. I'm thinking about something else. It's what is it? I can't remember what it is now. That's not important. I'll figure it out later and then I'll be like, oh my God. That's <laughs> of right now anyway, perfect line to explain the book so you guys can pick that up on amazon and uh i guess i'm gonna wrap us up since i'm the only one here there's no jade so i guess it's just me that's gonna have to wrap us up 
Okay. Uh, you can find out everything you ladies are up to at www.andithoughtladies.com. And while you're there, go down to the middle of the page and see the charities that we proudly support. We ask that you take a little time out of your day and think about helping them out as well. You know, difficult times means it's hard for everyone, including charities. We thank you in advance for that. And remember that wisdom is all around you if you're open to finding it and accepting it. So peace and love, you guys, from Wilnona and the Missing Jade. Bye-bye. Oh, yeah. Thanks for listening.